Okay. Today I'm going to show you how I bring up packages from hub.docker.com onto my TrueNAS server, TrueNAS scale server, to actually be able to use them out without having to rely on true charts to add something that I want. So just to give you an idea of a few things that I do currently have going that true charts has not added in yet would be my AdGuard home that I'm currently using, seven days to die server, and just some game servers. We'll go ahead and delete that one for now. So rather than wait on them to do it, I figured out how to do it myself. So the first thing you're going to do is go over to hub.docker.com, figure out what it is you're wanting to do. So I know a common one is Pihole that a lot of people like to use. I prefer AdGuard, but I'll go ahead and just show it for this demonstration. You're going to find one of the packages that someone has built. We'll just go ahead and use the native one built by the developers and go to their page. Then once here, you're in your app section, you're going to go to launch Docker images. Application name, you're just going to name it whatever it is you want. We'll go with Pihole. Container images, I take the lazy route, I click the copy button, I paste it, and then I just delete the Docker pole and the space to make it just Pihole slash Pihole for this one. Container entry point, I skip that. Environment variables, there's two of them here that matter. In the time zone, go ahead and copy that, paste, and then you will find your time zone. If you don't care about the time zone, it doesn't matter. Um, the only reason why you would care is if you were using it to monitor DNS inquiries and you want to know what happened, ti what time they happened. This is the only point that would matter. If you do not set this value, it will just default to GMT. So if you are in America slash Chicago like I am, you'll be at negative five to negative six, depending on where you're at in daylight savings time. Somewhere else in the world that's positive three, you'll be three hours behind. So that's the only reason why that one matters. Outside of that, really the only one you do need is just this web password one. And this is just the password to log into your Pi-hole instance. So for now, we will just, not in caps, set this to password. Click Next, Networking. There is apparently a way that TrueCharts does it to make it work in DNS. It's just confusing, and I don't like it. So I give my instance its own static IP on my network. It just works for me. My monkey brain can understand it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click Add External Interface. We're going to click Host Interface. Yours probably looks a lot different than mine. I have a Dell PowerBlade server that I'm using for mine, so it has a total of six interfaces on it. Yours, if it's just a standard tower, it has one interface, so it'll probably be the only one there. If you have installed a couple of virtual machines on your system, you'll get these Mac VTAPs. Don't worry about those. You're just going to click the other interface that you have. But for the mine, this is the interface that I have that is plugged into my network. And then we're going to go to a static IP. That way, when we go into our router, we can set that correctly or on our devices so it always knows where it's to go. Configure static IP. You're going to put it on your network wherever you want it. And then destination is just going to be whatever your network scheme is so 192.168.1.0 is going to be the last value slash 24 for pretty much your bog standard residential network if you don't have a residential network you probably know more in that regard and what you need to put in that instance and then your gateway is just going to be whatever the gateway of your network is generally a dot one dns just throw in whatever dns you want google's fine Port forwarding, since we gave it a static IP, none of this matters. Storage, this is the other thing that really matters on your Dockers. Really the things that matter is your storages and your environments. So we have two here. So the thing you're going to want to look for here is volumes. And that's where your Docker keeps all of its information. That way in the event of power outages, upgrades, reboots, when it comes back online, it'll be exactly what you want it to be. So you're just going to do a quick copy, paste, your data set names. It doesn't matter what you name it. It can be, you know, 
whatever you want it doesn't matter and then you're going to click next 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 and that's it and now you'll have a functional pie hole server so a easy way to test if you have persistence through upgrades reboots power outages uh, i have a really easy way to test that so we will wait for this to come all the way up we'll wait for it to say active and then we'll go log into it so while we wait for that kind of some other examples that i have is like um my valheim server is once again i went on to hub.docker went looked for a valheim docker server and the one i currently use is by this guy and then so we'll go ahead and take a look at that valheim click on that and he's right there on top so his is going to look a little different but docker based images and then under your environment tables he has it nice and listed just like this so this is where you put your server name just as so server port and so forth so that's where all of this is you go through put in what variables you want and then Oh, I want to say it's towards the bottom. Somewhere on this page it tells you what the volume names are. And just know this password, it's a very well known password between me and all of my friends. It's just something that we use. So it means nothing to me that you guys see that. Where is the volumes? Aha! Sometimes you gotta look a little close and find the dash V in someone's files. So basically you just need the config, and then the opt Valheim. Like I said, every page is a little different and it looks like I'm just rocking config. Don't even need that one. But anyways, that just gives you the general gist. So now that our package is spun all the way up, we'll go ahead and go log into it. Log in. Click our password, just password for this test, and then we are logged into our pie hole. Then from there, you can go into your router and point all the traffic you want to this particular instance, and it'll log in, block it, and do everything else you want. But to do a simple test of persistence, we're going to go to whitelist, and we're just going to put in test.com. Add to whitelist. Once you do that, go and close the page, and then we're going to stop our instance so as you see that we have stopped it you'll see that it no longer loads so we'll go ahead and start our instance up again and wait for it to say active says active come back over here refresh you'll see we're good to go log in one more time check our whitelist test.com so that means we have properly configured our pie hole if you come back to this and your test.com is not in there um, odds are you made an issue on that data set files down here on the bottom. All right, well, I hope this helps you install whatever Docker packages that you want, and thank you. And don't hate too much, this is my first video.